The federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750. Wait, 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 wait a minute. What's this? This ain't enough. Make it enough. What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Mika, and we're back for another Red Cup Talks because y'all know when we got the Red Cup, we're about to spill some truth. And today, I wanted to come on and talk about Kamala Harris and how she's handled the entire hurricane issue, okay? It's abysmal, it's horrible, and we're going to jump right into it because that ratchet opener you saw in the beginning is exactly how I feel about Kamala Harris and how she's handled this. Let's go. And I want to thank the local leaders for together creating a tactical response, knowing that we are at our best when we work together and coordinate resources, coordinate our communications to the maximum effect for the community that has been um, impacted. Uh, and the federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750 for folks who need immediate needs being met, such as food, baby formula, and the like. And you can apply now for anyone who's watching this who has been affected. Ma'am, if they don't have the basic needs of food, water, house, how the hell are they gonna have Wi-Fi? Go and apply online. And I don't know if you guys know, but Starlink, offered to help, which is Elon Musk. And you know, they do not like, you know, they do not like Elon Musk. Okay. So they declined. So now there is no help with Wi-Fi. So ma'am, how are they going to apply? Oh, they're going to have to go and find a way to get to a hotel. Well, that defeats the purpose. If the roads are messed up, they can't get there. They're staying in their homes that are filthy. <sighs> this woman. There are FEMA personnel who are going door to door to interact personally with folks, especially those who do not have electricity, but also um, that, that aid, if you have electricity, can be applied for online, and I encourage people to do that. FEMA will just basically verify your address, and then process should take um, if you have electricity, <laughs> like I don't mean to laugh, but I laugh just to keep from using explicits at this lady. Oof. FEMA is also providing tens of thousands more dollars for folks to help them be able to deal with home repair, um, to be able to cover a deductible when and if they have insurance and also hotel costs. Ma'am. <laughs> It's funny that she says that, and we're going to get into that a little later, but she said that all of this stuff is for covering hotel costs, is for covering uh, home repairs if they don't have home insurance. Okay, we'll see about that. All right, let's get into the next situation. So here you have Secretary Mayorkas basically telling the world in a sneaky sort of fashion that the Biden-Harris administration does not have the funds to actually go forth and help. Here we go. Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas sounding the alarm on FEMA funding right after the devastation of Hurricane Helene. Listen. We are meeting the immediate needs uh, with the money that we have. We are expecting another hurricane hitting. Uh, we do not have the funds. FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season. This all comes as the Biden-Harris administration spent over a billion dollars from a FEMA program on services for migrants. Attorney General of the great state of Florida, Ashley Moody, joins me now. A.G. Moody, why does the Biden-Harris administration always seem to help American taxpayers last? Good morning, Todd. Yeah, everyone should be waking up this morning outraged by that comment. This is not something that has just happened recently, and Florida's been warning about this since this administration took over. Mayorkas has come in like a virus and infected these what need to be healthy, strong, fundamental programs 
to ensure the stability and safety of Americans in times of disaster. So you heard they have taken the FEMA emergency food and shelter program and over time siphoned off hundreds of millions of dollars into basically making it an illegal immigrant resettlement program. And so so if you don't know, the argument is that the Republicans and conservatives are making up that um, FEMA is using FEMA money. Mind you, it's still from FEMA, but is using the money that is set aside for whatever that they do with the migrants. All right. And this is a separate bank account, separate fund now. I don't know how many of you are married or how many of you are in relationships, but if you do know how these things work, you can have an account. He can have an account, whatever. It's all the same pot. It's the same money. Y'all in the same family. It's the same money. And this money that they're talking about, FEMA, okay, is the same money. It's taxpayer money. It's people from America. It's not Venezuela. It's not. And, and let's be clear again, If people are coming over because they're seeking asylum, they should come in the correct way, right? There's no problem with people coming over wanting to, you know, get uh, asylum seeking, but they're not applying through these things. They're just coming over. But anywho, if they're using the funds of any taxpayer funding for illegal people, these are not just migrants. These are illegal migrants. They're jumping the wall. They're climbing over here. They're going through, they're going across the border. They're being flown across country at this point with our money. They're not using their money. So they say, hey, the conservative media is lying. We are not using those type of funds. Well, here's the White House saying that they are. The White House is trying to tell us that, no, 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 this is two different pools of money. We're not, you. we didn't use FEMA money for the illegals, but Karine Jean-Pierre actually told us what they were doing back in 2022. Watch this, it's absolutely outrageous, listen. FEMA regional administrators have been meeting with city officials on site to coordinate to coordinate available federal uh, support from FEMA and other uh, federal agencies. Funding is also available through FEMA's emergency food and shelter program to eligible local governments and not for non for profit organizations upon request uh, to support humanitarian relief for migrants. We'll continue to do what we can as a federal government to support uh, these cities as we rebuild our asylum processing system after it was gutted uh, by the Trump administration. So let me get this right, madam. Um, The Trump administration gutted that money so you couldn't give it to immigrants. And then you decided to allot that money right back once Harris and Biden got in. That's exactly what you said. And then you said, oh, it's from the shelter and food emergency program. That is the same exact program that these people in North Carolina, Tennessee, Florida, all of these places need. I don't know if they think we're stupid or we can't read, but we can definitely read and This is abysmal. Like, this is ridiculous. This is what our government does. And it's sad because the young lady right there is just, you know, the press secretary. She has to go up and speak for these things because these people are not going to speak for themselves. Biden is not going to speak for himself and neither is Kamala Harris. Right. And she could care less because not only was Biden sitting on a beach, Kamala Harris decided to go to a fundraising event. People like she's on the campaign. She's on the campaign. What does that matter? You want to be the president of the United States. You're in office right now because for the life of me, I can't understand why you guys don't get that. She's in office right now. So she's in office right now. You can cut these campaign events just like Trump did and go out and help the American people 24 seven boots on the ground. You would get a lot more votes doing that, showing your leadership than these fundraisers and these events that only have 47 people in them. But I digress. This is what leadership looks like, vote footage. Former President Trump was the first leader to travel to assess the damage, arriving in Georgia last week to help relief efforts. Two days before President Biden and Vice President Harris decided to visit the Southeast to survey the damage. 
Our country is in the final weeks of a hard-fought national election. But in a time like this, when a crisis hits, when our fellow citizens cry out in need, none of that matters. We're not talking about politics now. We have to all get together and get this solved. Joining me now in the Sunday Morning Futures exclusive is former Hawaii Congresswoman and member of Trump's transition team, Tulsi Gabbard, who has been on the ground in North Carolina and Georgia, helping the victims of Hurricane Helene. Tulsi, thank you. Now, the reason why I chose this segment in particular is because it's going to tie in with something else that people don't want to really realize what's going on. But I'm going to let Tulsi talk and then we're going to come back. Thanks very much for being here this morning. Thanks, Maria. Can you tell us what you have been experiencing and assess the situation from the ground? It was heartbreaking there to see how many people still have been forgotten. Uh, and this is uh, difficult to capture in words when you see entire towns and entire communities have literally disappeared with their lives, their homes, their businesses, their entire life savings swept away in this 20 foot wall of water that went through their communities. The sad thing is, Maria, you know, I, I, I look back to what happened in uh, Maui during the wake of the tragic historic fires there and the many layers of failures that came from FEMA. And I'm seeing the exact same thing play out here today. While Vice President Harris and Joe Biden claim to be doing all they can and providing all the resources possible, FEMA is out on the ground, they say. But when you go out into these rural communities, they have yet to see anyone with a FEMA jacket on knocking on their door saying, how can we help you? Uh, it is a slap in the face of these Americans to also then hear how the Secretary of Department of Homeland Security is saying, sorry, we don't have enough money because we are providing uh, hundreds of millions of dollars to illegal immigrants and providing them with free rent, free housing, free food uh, and other entitlements. Meanwhile, these people have lost their homes. They've lost their vehicles. They've lost their businesses. And they're wondering how they're going to get by to tomorrow, what to speak of next week, next month, and next year. Uh, there, there are the, such a huge laundry list of the needs that they have. Uh, you look at power. So many of these communities are still without power. There are many small towns with hundreds or maybe a thousand people who live in these towns. As you're seeing here in these images, they have yet to be able to get the power they need to be able to get access to water water and water pumps and wells, uh, they are wondering, where is FEMA? Where are the Army Corps of Engineers? Why haven't people come out there and start, started to do the necessary work that the, the volunteer firefighters are unable to do themselves? They're doing all that they possibly can, and they're wondering, where is our government? Why are they not here for us? This so here's the thing. Tulsi... OK, knows what it's like to have a devastation like this. Right. Because she's she was out there in Maui. But the reason why I wanted to use this to segue into that is because where Asheville is. All right. There are something called lithium mines. OK. And for a lot of you, we're, we're going to get into conspiracy land. But there are lithium mines out there where this devastation is, right? And so when I look at all of this, it reminds me of what the government was saying in Maui. Take a look. I'm already thinking about ways for the state to acquire that land so that we can put it into workforce housing, to put it back into families, or to make it open spaces in perpetuity as a memorial to people who were lost. We want this to be something that we remember uh, after the pain passes. So what you saw there is the government talking about what they wanted to do with the land in Maui now that the people could not go back, the people could no longer return to their homes, that they're going to bulldoze their homes, right? Okay, well, where these people are in Asheville and other places in North Carolina, it's mind rich, OK, so there are a lot of there's a lot of lithium in Asheville and the surrounding areas. If you think for a second that the government won't do intimate domain, you are sadly mistaken. So I want you to see just what the sentiment is online on TikTok and what people on the ground are saying. We're going to go through a couple of them. Here we go. 
I just want everyone to know that we are displaced due to Hurricane Helene from Western North Carolina. We cannot go home. We have no power, no food, no water, no nothing. We are spending $400 a night on a hotel due to price gouging in the surrounding areas because they know that people have nowhere to go. We applied for FEMA, myself and my sister applied. My sister applied first, she got denied. I said, okay, let me try. I applied, we got denied. So we have both been denied FEMA assistance. So everyone's saying yeah. FEMA is helping $750. And by the way, that $750 wouldn't even cover two nights at this hotel. So I just want everyone to know that FEMA sucks and uh president's doing nothing and we are stuck here i am blowing through all my savings in a hotel to escape a natural disaster so fuck you fema and by the way do not donate to red cross donate to samaritan's purse or to me because we are uh bringing supplies in donate to the victims directly i'm not taking any of the money for myself um i don't like accepting anything. We are sending truckloads in from a friend who lives out in Greenville. So, and when we get to go back, we will bring a full truck of supplies. So don't donate to these big organizations because we're not getting any, any of it. And it's funny that she says that, right? Because a lot of people don't know with big nonprofit organizations, nonprofit, you do not have to spend all of the money on whatever the nonprofit is about, right? You only need about 30% and then the rest, you can do whatever you want with it. That makes it a nonprofit. So what does the Red Cross do with all the money? I don't know. Remember all that money that was raised for Hurricane Katrina? Remember that? There's now over 25 feet of water where there was once city streets and thriving neighborhoods. Oh. I hate the way they portray us in the media. If you see a black family, it says they're looting. It's been five days because most of the people are black. And even for me to complain about, I would be a hypocrite because I've tried to turn away from the teacher TV because it's too hard to watch. I've even been shopping before even giving a donation. So now I'm calling my business manager right now to see what's, what is the biggest amount I can give. And, and just to imagine if I was, if I was down there and those are, those are my people down there. So anybody out there that wants to do anything that we can help with, with the setup, the way America is set up to help the, um, uh, the poor, the, the black people, the, uh, the less well off as slow as possible. I mean, this is Red Cross is doing everything they can. We, we already realize a lot of the people that could help are at war right now fighting another way. And they, they they've given them permission to go down and shoot us. And subtle, but in even many ways more profoundly devastating is the lasting damage to the survivors will to rebuild and remain in the area. The destruction of the spirit of the people of southern Louisiana and Mississippi may end up being the most tragic loss of all. George Bush doesn't care about black people. And neither does Kamala Harris. And not only that, she doesn't care about the white mountain people that... <laughs> It has been the narrative online, which is disgusting. The same thing that I thought about George Bush and <clears throat> Katrina, because I was a child when this happened, but it was all over the TV and we all knew who the president was. But at the same time, the same thing I thought is the same thing I think now. You are, George Bush flew over. He said, oh, I, I it flew over. I flew over. Black people and people in America gave him hell for that. The fact that he flew over. Kamala went down there one day. Then she just recently went back down there and packed a couple little sandwich bags, you know, talking sister girl like, you know, just it's it's just it's cringy. It's cringy. And this woman wants to be the leader. George Bush was trash. And so is Kamala Harris. But anyway, let's get back to the people on the ground. Here we go. The situation in Asheville, North Carolina is getting more sinister by the day. Not only is the mud toxic and they're not letting people know, but we may have just figured out the reason why 
they are not allowing anyone to render aid to these people that are in desperate need for help. In Asheville, South Carolina, after 188 people are dead, there are survivors that need help, food, water, batteries. They are literally out there looting. People are trying to get in and help them, private agencies, people with their own helicopters, and they are not being allowed to pass. Police are blocking off stores. Sheriffs are not allowing people into or out of certain towns or areas to help these people. And then this morning, we have this very eerie tweet that claims to be the reason why. This needs to go far and wide to put pressure on the government to do the right thing and save lives. This is coming from a Peak Prosperity member who is in the same area of South Carolina where this is going on and a part of what they are trying to do as far as stopping people from getting aid. They wanted to remain anonymously and had this tweet put out by Chris Matson, PhD. They say that they can't post this online because it's not quite public yet. But government officials had a town meeting with all the residents of Chimney Rock and basically told them the town was being bulldozed. Bodies and all and the land was being seized by the federal government and they would not be able to move back and basically their homes, the ones they were standing were no longer theirs and the federal government owned it all. Went out to say that there are a lot of conspiracies about the lithium mines. This could be why we are seeing people not allowed to go in and out of Chimney Rock, Asheville, and these mudslides that are potentially hazardous. And they're not allowing anyone to do shit. Water, nothing. No one can be rescued. And it's not making sense what the federal government is up to. So you just saw that, right? So the people on the ground are putting two and two together. You can say alleged, you can say conspiracy, whatever. But the people on the ground are talking to each other. The people from d the different towns in North Carolina are putting things together to figure out why the federal government has not met their needs. Why are they not coming to their aid? Why? They have enough money. Just the other day, the vice president literally went and pledged money to Lebanon. Watch. Okay, so you think it's political as well, something Cheryl Cassoni just said as well. But look, Congressman, you're, you are an elected official. How is it possible that Kamala Harris can just spend money like a drunken sailor? I mean, she is facing mm -hmm. criticism this morning from angry Americans because she pledged $157 million to Lebanon at the same time that residents of North Carolina are struggling to recover from Hurricane Helene and another hurricane is on the way. Here's what Kamala Harris posted on X. I am concerned about the well-being of civilians suffering in Lebanon. The United States will provide $157 million in additional assistance to the people of Lebanon for essential needs such as food, shelter, water, protection, and sanitation. She doesn't have one tweet as detailed as that one right there that she did for Lebanon. Not for Americans. She doesn't have one. That tweet says food, shelter, water, protection, sanitation. Right now, they can't even drink water in North Carolina. So they can't even drink water in North Carolina, but you're going to make sure Lebanon and, and for the life of me, all this will, the roads are closed. The roads are, are, are flooded. What in the world do you think is going on in Lebanon that you're going to get in? Because you can get in because you can. You have the, you have the military. Y'all talk all of this January 6th stuff. Okay. The military. Use it. Use the guard down there. 1500 for Tennessee, for North Carolina, for Florida, 1500 1500 But she wants to lie to you um, on the, the debate stage and tell you, yeah, there's no active members anywhere. There's no, they're actively putting us in war. They're actively, we want to cease fire. No, you don't. No, you don't. You can't possibly want to cease fire. Look what you're doing. You're play, play, how, how much is that? A hundred and fifty seven million. North Carolina got less than 30 million. This is outrageous. And y'all want to put this woman in office. What is happening? Y'all will make every excuse in the world. Forget everything that's forget how she can't read off a teleprompter. We'll get to that in, 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 in a leadership video that's coming next. She can't do rallies. She can't do a lot of things. Her interviews suck. OK. But y'all want this woman to be president. And she don't even want to help you. Look at this. 
And it's not just white people that need help right now. It's black people. It's mixed people. It's Hispanic people. And she is feeling it in the polls. Trust me, she's feeling it in the polls because she's dropping. And this, 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 this right here just tells me everything I need to know about her. Like everything I need to know about her. This shows me how she would do leadership because you, you guys like to make the point of, well, she's just the vice president, not according to her boss. She's not just the vice president. Listen to Joe Biden. With the hurricane, with Port Strike, with the situation in the Middle East. Can you talk about how your vice president, who is running for the presidency, has worked on these uh, crises and what role she has played over the past several days? Well, she's, I'm in constant contact with her. She's aware we're, we all, we're singing from the same song sheet. We, uh, she helped pass the, all the laws that are being employed now. She, she helped pass. <clears throat> She helped pass all the laws that are being employed now. Thank you, Biden. She was a major player in everything we've done, including passage of uh, legislation, which we were told we could never pass. And so she's been, uh, and her, her staff is interlocked with mine in terms of all the things we're doing. So what did he say? Her staff is interlocked with mine. She's helped with all the things that they're doing now. And she is the major player in getting everything passed. By her own words, she's the last person in the room. So miss me with that. She's a vice president stuff. Like, I, I guess y'all just don't listen. But y'all, y'all want to blame President Trump for stuff, and he's not even in office. Oh, he he told them, he called them up and told them, okay, well he's not in office. She's actually in office, and y'all don't hold her accountable for anything. Oh well, he he told them, okay, so she has no influence as the vice president, but he has all the influence, and right now he's only a former pre uh, president, currently a private citizen. Child, you can't make this up. Y'all do not want to hold this woman accountable. This is her leadership. She's showing you. She is showing you with this hurricane. This is her leadership. And she's horrible at it. Okay? But now I'm going to go into some updates. Let's see what's happening now. Because apparently another hurricane is coming. This one is called Hurricane Milton. Let's look at these updates. Breaking update for you on Hurricane Milton. It just strengthened to a Category 4 storm along Florida's Gulf Coast. That means it could bring with it catastrophic damage, according to the Weather Service. If it hits at this strength, the area it comes in contact with may be uninhabitable for weeks. And, of course, this is happening after the wrath of Hel Helene less than two weeks ago. Hurricane Milton expected to make landfall Wednesday, Tampa Airport already suspending flights starting tomorrow morning. And this morning, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis said emergency services are actually trying to ramp up as they complete cleanup efforts from Helene. He says that's critical before Milton arrives. We had a lot of debris left from Hurricane Helene on Florida's Gulf Coast. Uh, that creates a huge hazard uh, if you have a major hurricane hit in that area uh, this week. CBS News correspondent Christian Benavidez joins us from Tampa, Florida. Pressure mounting, Chris, to speed up the clean effort after Helene. But how is that possible since folks are already doing as much as they can? Errol, it is just so absolutely challenging. And I want to give you a sense of how folks here in the Tampa Bay area are preparing. We're in St. Petersburg. And take a look at the line. Uh, we've got folks here that are waiting to pick up. And I have family there in St. Pete and Clearwater, as well as Miami. My dad's family is Cuban, so I have a lot of family down in that part of Florida. And when I tell you that <laughs> a hurricane like this can just wipe out those homes, right? Th those homes are usually one level homes and they're not you know, the sturdiest. Some may be built out of bricks, but they're, they're going to be flooded. It's, it's oh. So sad.
sandbags. I spoke to one man who said that he was in line for about two hours before getting to this point where he was able to actually grab some sandbags. He's in a zone A evacuation zone, and they're already being told that they're likely to be evacuated. And in fact, the evacuations here could reach up to zone C. At this point, uh, people are just sort of preparing for what could potentially happen. Keep this in mind that the Tampa Bay area has not had a major hurricane make a direct landfall since 1921. That's over 100 years ago, so it's truly something that would be untested for this area. Just around the corner for, from here, about 10 minutes away, uh, we were in a neighborhood that was just, uh, that had about six feet of storm surge. 80 percent of the homes there uh, were flooded and people's belongings are just out on the street. There is so much concern, of course, about that debris as well, the potential for that debris to go flying and for it to clog up the storm drains as this as Hurricane Milton is uh, barreling this way. Christian, I'm hopeful that viewers there are heeding your advice and the advice from officials um, to get to a safe place, but we don't want to uh, frighten people, but this is a serious storm on the way. Christian Benavides, thanks so much. You and the crew stay safe. So we've went back to the past with Katrina. We've gone through the first boots on the ground, which was Donald Trump. Okay. We've gone from talking to Tulsi about Maui to the conspiracies about Maui and why they won't let those people back on their land because of what the governor said, right, of the government taking uh, internet domain over the land instead of giving it back to the people that rightfully own it, right? And what they're gonna do with it to Asheville and the surrounding areas of why they won't uh, you know, go and rescue those people and what they're gonna do as far as bulldoze in the towns, right? And people on the ground saying that they can't even get help. FEMA is not there. Meanwhile, the government keeps saying that they're there and they're not, right? They gave 1,500. National Guardmen, 1,500. When Fort Bragg is down there, you could just get those men, you know, from the military. But again, we're in so many proxy wars and we're helping everybody else that we can't help regular Americans, right? We can't help regular Americans get from one side to another. There are Americans down there using their own tractors, their own stalls. They are driving, you know, through dangerous terrain to actually go and help people versus the United States government who has the means, right? Because as you just us all we are sending money to Lebanon you know for those efforts of sanitation food and all this other stuff and they get little sandwich bags and this is our money that we're sending out our money right but you want her to be president you really want her to be commander in chief and you think She's going to do the right thing on day one where she can't even do anything now. And she's in office. I am not going to stop saying that that woman is in office because I, for the life of me, you guys keep forgetting that she's in office right now. The Biden-Harris administration, more or less now, the Harris-Biden administration, because our Democratic leaders say that Biden is incapacity. He can't do it. So he's not doing anything. He barely remembers anything. He's falling everywhere. It is Kamala in charge. It is. Yes, they have not enacted the 25th Amendment, but it is Kamala Harris in charge. We're not dumb nor stupid. That woman is in charge and she's not doing a good job. She'd rather go sit with donors to fund her losing campaign. She'd rather do that. No one likes how she's leading. Not black, not white. Nobody. She thinks American people are dumb. She's going to see November 5th. Let me know if you think she's doing the best that she can do. She's only the vice president. Or let me know if you think she can do more. She is the leader. Like for the life of me, she is the leader of this country. And nobody is holding her feet to the fire. She spent 20 minutes at the border and she spent a day and a half down in North Carolina filling up little sandwich bags, laughing per usual. The woman cannot lead. 
Like I said, I'll get into that in another video, but I'm going to keep saying it. She's in the office right now. Click on one of these videos right here as we get into more. As this continues to unfold, you know, weather-wise and what they do, I'll continue to update you. But when I say I had to double cup this, I had to double cup this because, yeah. Like, comment, and subscribe. It's your girl, Mika. I'm out.